Here's why you might have rat poison in your medicine cabinet. In the late 1920s, North Dakota farmers were struggling to make ends meet during the largest economic calamity in our nation's history. The, Gr the Great Depression saw food lines and Americans migrating throughout the country trying to find employment. A lot of farmers that stayed on their land had little or no money at all. To make matters worse, the cattle were mysteriously dying. They were bleeding out internally from an unknown cause. In 1924, a veterinarian pathologist from Ontario Veterinary College by the name of Frank Schofield set to work to discover why the cattle were strangely dying. He hypothesized that spoiled sweet clover hay was causing the cattle to bleed internally and die. By developing animal models using rabbits, he was able to prove that the cause was moldy sweet clover hay. Now normally farmers would discard the moldy hay, but during hard times they had no choice but to use it. So the Ontario Veterinary College did not allow him to take his project further and ordered him back to teaching. So Schoenfeld was disenchanted, he was frustrated, and he was also a very religious man, so he decided to move to Korea to spread the gospel. A veterinary surgeon by the name of Lee Roderick took over where Schofield left off and discovered that the illness was reversible and could be cured with a blood transfusion or by removing the moldy hay from the diet early on. Unfortunately, some of the farmers thought this whole moldy sweet clover hay thing was a bunch of crap. Their feeling was that they haven't changed anything and the animals are dying all of a sudden. Plus, the sweet clover thing just sounds ridiculous. One of these farmers, a Wisconsin man named Ed Carlson, had lost over a dozen head of cattle and he was fed up. One February Saturday, he drove through a blizzard 200 miles to the local agricultural experimental station with a pail of blood, a dead cow, and 100 pounds of moldy sweet clover hay. Now Carl Link, a biochemistry professor from the University of Wisconsin, happened to be there with his student, Wilhelm Schoffel. All Link could recommend is avoiding the moldy hay and a blood transfusion for the cow. Now you can imagine the farmer saying, who the hell has money for a blood transfusion? After that chance encounter, Link sent to work to isolate the compound in the sweet clover hay. He received funding from the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation, or WARF. It took him and his team of students six years to isolate the compound and they called it dicumerol. They continued their work and created a lot of compounds similar to dicumerol. A compound called cumarin is naturally in the hay and the mold converts it to dicumerol. In 1945, Professor Link was thinking of how to put the poison to good use. He was recovering in a sanitarium from pulmonary tuberculosis and he came up with the idea to use it on rats. However, dicumerol killed too slowly. One of the compounds similar to dicumerol that Link and his team created was perfect. It killed fast enough but not too fast as to be excessively dangerous to people. They called it warfarin, a combination of the word warf for the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation and Coumarin. Professor Link successfully marketed warfarin as a rat poison, successful not only because of its toxicity, but also because if a human ingested it, it was reversible with a blood transfusion. Later on, it was discovered that vitamin K could also reduce the effects of warfarin. It was not looked at as a blood thinner for human use until the 1950s when a Navy inductee tried to kill himself by eating rat poison. It took so long to kill him that he had time for second thoughts and he was successfully treated with vitamin K. Clinical trials started later and even President Eisenhower was taking it after a heart attack. Now it was a strange journey for warfarin, starting out as a crisis among livestock, then rat poison, and now it's in medicine cabinets all over the world. I want to thank you guys for watching Jeff the Pharmacist. Please like and subscribe.